so far we've covered two questions what is analytics and why is analytics becoming so popular now now let's come to the third topic in the first module which is application of analytics in business so we've understood what is analytics and why it's being used so much more now now let's spend a little time understanding some of the applications of analytics in business the first example that we have is from the financial services world now if you look at the credit card here on the screen you will see that this is a co-branded credit card you can see two different logos here you can see the Citibank logo on the right side and you can see the jet airways logo on the left side so Citibank essentially launched a credit card that was co-branded with jet airways now what is different about this credit card is that there is no fee of any kind on this credit card there is no joining fee there is no annual fee there is no add-on fee there is no renewal fee uh, on top of all of this every time you spend some money on your credit card you get free jp miles you get two jp miles for every hundred rupees spent jp miles is essentially miles on the jt based loyalty program plus additional features like extra baggage allowance free upgrade vouchers etc so you can see that Citibank is pursuing these customers very aggressively. Why are they doing this? Why have they waived off all kinds of fee in order to attract these customers? This is essentially because after doing various analyses on the spending information of their credit card customers, Citibank, like many other credit card companies, has identified air travelers as a highly profitable customer segment. Now, Citibank is targeting them with more focused marketing strategies and providing higher customer satisfaction through more relevant offers. So essentially, what Citibank has done is it has looked at the buying behavior of its customers. And then it has tried to find some common characteristics across its customers which are profitable. Okay. So which are the profitable customers for a credit card company? Not all customers are profitable customers for a credit card company. If you are a customer who has a credit card, but you have five other credit cards and you never use this particular one, then you're not going to be profitable for this credit card company. On the other hand, if you are a customer who uses uh, their credit card regularly, but also pay off the entire balance at the end of the month, then again, since you're not carrying over your balances, the credit card company can't charge you any interest, you are again not a profitable customer. So only the customers who carry over their balances and pay interest on their balances, they are the ones who are more likely to be profitable customers for a credit card company. Now Citibank wanted to identify more profitable customers. So they began by looking at their own data. They looked at the data, the buying behavior of their customers, and they identified customers who travel a lot, especially by air, they are the ones who tend to be more profitable. Now there can be a lot of uh, different reasons you can hypothesize around why this is happening. So. Um, you know, people who travel a lot uh, are uh, usually very busy since they are traveling, so they may forget to pay their bills on time. If you travel a lot, if you are going to a new country or a new place, you tend to have less cash on you. You tend to use your cards more when you are traveling. That could be another reason. Or uh, a lot of travelers are business travelers and they tend to use their credit cards for everything when they are traveling. So there are a lot of reasons why these customers could be profitable, but analyzing the data enabled Citibank to identify this as a profitable customer segment. So now Citibank said, what once we've identified who are the people who are likely to be profitable once they become our customers, how do we target these customers? So you want to target air travelers, why not use a marketing strategy which gives incentives to people who travel a lot? So hence they tied up with Jet Airways and they came up with this card where you are getting incentives every time you spend money, you are getting uh, free miles which is valuable for any air traveler, you get extra baggage allowance, free upgrade vouchers, all these incentives are specifically targeting air travelers. So this is an example of marketing strategy being guided by analytics. So Citibank used analytics to 
identify profitable customers and they modified their marketing strategies in order to target these profitable customers better. Jet Airways is of course targeting an increase in its loyal customer base. Jet Airways knows that loyal customers are more profitable and this is a way to get more loyal customers. So in the end this is a win-win situation for Jet Airways, for Citibank as well as for the customers. So this is an example of analytics being used in business. Now let's come to an example from e-commerce. Amazon.com, of course, all of you would have heard of uh, this company. Most of you would have visited their website. Some of you would have bought products from there as well. Amazon is one of the pioneers of analytics in the virtual space. Amazon's concept of personalization is based on statistical algorithms and user information captured on their website. Here if you see, we have an example of uh, some of the things that Amazon does for its customers. So for example, if you are looking for a book, here I am looking for a book called Competing on Analytics and uh, when I look for that book, Amazon is giving me recommendations about other books that I may be interested in based on what I am looking for. So if I am looking for Competing on Analytics, the two other books that are of interest are Analytics at Work by the same author and how to measure anything by a different author. Both these books I know are uh, related to analytics and are similar to the one that I'm looking for. So this means that Amazon is able to offer powerful recommendations to its customers that are purely data driven. Now if Amazon were a small store, you know, it, if it was a single brick and mortar store, then it would probably be run by someone who is very interested in books, has a lot of knowledge and can give a lot of recommendations to people who come to the store. But since Amazon is online, their customers are spread all over the world and uh, as we saw in the previous videos, they are doing dozens of transactions every second of the day. It is not possible for one person or even an army of people to be sitting behind the Amazon website and offering recommendations to people as they come on the website. It has to be done in an automated way and this is where statistical algorithms come into the picture. Amazon has developed these sophisticated statistical algorithms that allow it to predict which are the other products a customer would be interested in based on the first product that the customer is looking for. If the customers are happy with the recommendations, they will buy more items, they will come back to the Amazon website and in general lead to an increase in Amazon's bottom line. So this is again an example of a business using analytics to become more competitive and provide more value to its customers. Let's look at a third example. This one is from the sports uh, field. US has traditionally led the analytics race. US companies are usually at the forefront of analytics. Even in sports, analytics uh, is being heavily used in US uh, sports like baseball, American football and basketball. But now even European clubs are realizing the importance of analytics. Football clubs like AC Milan, Bolton Wanderers, Everton make extensive use of analytics to boost their team's performance, player performance and also club loyalty among the fans. Milan Lab is an initiative by AC Milan and this lab essentially identifies the risk factors most likely to be associated with an injury for each player based on their physiological, orthopedic and psychological data. So, they will look at the data of each and every player and based on their physiological orthopedic data, they will identify what are the weak points for each player. So player 1 has a weak ankle, he is likely to suffer from an ankle injury. Player 2 has a weak groin, he is likely to suffer from a groin injury. So predict what kind of injuries a particular player is likely to have so that the physio can then start focusing on strengthening that particular area for that particular player. So even in sports, analytics is being uh, adopted heavily. Now this is about football, but even in uh, cricket, analytics is being used more and more now. Um, if you look at clubs like Royal Challengers and Mumbai Indians in the IPL, they've already started using data to make better decisions. There was an article recently about the New Zealand team and the New Zealand cricket board deciding to use a statistical model or an equation to determine which players get into the team. 
So they've decided to do away with the whole selection panel because uh, people have their own biases and all those things. And they've decided to use an analytical model to decide which player gets into the team. So these are all examples of how analytics is being used more and more in sports as well. And uh, this is also an example to show that analytics rises wherever there is data present to analyze. You know, in whichever domain, in whichever field we have data, sooner or later analytics will come into the picture. Here we have a graph of analytics usage by industry. These are uh, the industries where analytics is popular. CRM or customer relationship management is where it's most popular. Followed banking, healthcare, education, fraud, science, social networks, credit scoring, direct marketing and insurance. These are some of the most popular domains. Of course, analytics is being used in a lot of other domains as well. Some of the common problems that analytics can help us solve, uh, if uh, you are a credit card company, then uh, the kind of questions you need to answer, who should I offer my credit cards to? A lot of people will apply for credit cards. A credit card company needs to have a sound policy to decide who to offer their credit cards to and who not to offer. So this is something where analytics comes in. You can build models which will tell you whether to offer a person a credit card or not. Similarly, build models to decide what will be the credit limit for each customer, what will be the interest rate, how do you identify fraud, how do you predict bankruptcy, all of these can be answered using analytics. In the retail domain, retailers are interested in understanding how to stock the products in order to maximize their profitability, how to market to their customers to maximize their appeal, how to price new and existing products, how to design promotion strategies to maximize customer benefit. All of these can be answered using analytics. FMCG or uh, CPG companies use analytics to price their products, to optimize their inventory, to determine if a particular ad campaign is working or not, and to determine the ROI from their marketing budget. Telecom companies similarly use analytics to manage credit limits, to sell more value add services, Hotels, airlines, etc. Any anyone with a perishable inventory will also be interested in using analytics to uh, optimize their pricing, optimize their occupancy, estimate the lifetime value of their customers. So these are all examples of problems that are commonly faced by businesses that can be solved using analytics. Of course, this doesn't mean that analytics can be used to solve each and every problem. There are a lot of uh, examples where analytics cannot be used and here we have a couple of them. The first example pertains to Amazon which as we said is one of the companies that relies heavily on analytics. Even a company like Amazon sometimes needs to go beyond analytics and uh, take decisions without using analytics. For example, Amazon a couple of years ago they launched this new feature called search inside the book. You know, if you see a book icon on the Amazon website, it will have uh, this click to look inside icon on top of it, which means that if you click there, you can read a part of the book. When Amazon wanted to launch this uh, feature, they wanted to test it first and make sure that they are uh, doing something that customers will find valuable. However, because it's a totally new product, they didn't have any data for comparison. And it was not even possible to get this data unless they tested it. And even to test this feature, they had to apply it to at least 120,000 books, which means that it was a fairly expensive proposition for them. So with no analytics to guide them, Amazon decided to rely on their intuition. Specifically, their CEO, Jeff Bezos, decided that he loved the feature and uh, decided to take a gamble. He made an intuitive decision and uh, went ahead with this, made the investment and of course it turned out to be a very popular uh, feature now. But this is an example of a new product being launched so there is no data for you to analyze which means that you can't use analytics in this case. The second example is the crash of the home mortgage market in the US that happened a couple of years ago. So again, uh, since a lot of these loans are dispersed based on credit policies that are based on statistical models, when uh, the home mortgage market flopped, a lot of people started blaming analytics for it. And uh, of course, since uh, these uh, decisions are based on analytics, it seemed fair, but it's actually not the case. See, a model is only as good as the assumptions that underlie the model. 
All the models in the US home mortgage market that were used to disperse credit were based on the economy being prosperous. They were based on conditions of general economic prosperity. But when the economy took a downturn, these conditions were no longer valid. People were no longer getting the bonuses or the increases that they thought they will. Uh, people no longer had their jobs. The real estate prices were falling. So a combination of all this meant that the whole environment had changed considerably. So these companies had to change their models accordingly, which they didn't do. And consequently, the crash of the home mortgage market. So it's not analytics, but the improper use of analytics that is to blame for this. So now we've uh, looked at some examples of application of analytics in various business situations. We've looked at examples from retail, from financial services, from e-commerce, from sports and various other domains.